Your Creative Push, Episode 290. Experience as much as you can and live a full life. That will really help you to become a, a better designer, I think, in the end, a better creative. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Jan Urschel. Jan is a freelance concept designer and illustrator working in the entertainment industry. He's designed for feature films and video games, and his clients have included Paramount Pictures, Warner Brothers, Lucasfilm, Marvel, EA, Sony, Ubisoft, LucasArts, and the list goes on and on and on. And on today's show, he talks about living and working in Singapore, first as a graphic designer, and then the inspiration that came over him to become a concept designer, and then the thought process behind actually making that switch. Jan talks about his decision to go to school for Japanese studies and what that did for his art, and then how he started and stopped doing his art many times over the years. He tells us how he got his first job at LucasArts and what it was like to work there, and then the constant struggle that he has gone through of either not being allowed to show the work that he did on a project or not wanting to show it anymore because it's been so long once he's finally allowed to show it. Jan also talks about the importance of doing personal work as a freelancer and how he attempts to find that very tough balance of personal work and client work, including his personal project called Project T, something that he does just for himself. And finally, Jan explores the idea of being the most productive and being in the most effective state when he is employing painful self-discipline. I also just wanted to note that the audio quality is not its best or is not as good as it usually is, and that's totally my fault. I apologize, but it does not take away from uh, this wonderful conversation and an inspiring conversation with Jan Urschel. Enjoy. Jan, welcome to Your Creative Push. Hey, nice to nice to be on here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you very much for coming. <laughs> I always like to give my guests the opportunity at the start of the show to just kind of give a brief overview, sort of your creative background and how you got to the point you are today. Oh, okay, that's a, that's a very a long winded story, but I try to to keep it short. Um, so um, I'm I'm a concept designer. I work in um, I work in film and, and, and video games to uh, help productions uh, kind of in the pre-production phase to visual, visualize their ideas uh, to bring these big projects, uh, be it uh, for Star Wars or Marvel or, I don't know, uh, video game franchises like Call of Duty to, to life. My journey has been quite uh, not, not very straightforward. I've started doing creative work um Actually, quite early on, but more for myself, maybe in the mid '90s when the internet kind of got popular in, in in Germany, where I'm from. I was fascinated by websites, and I wanted to build my own. And then I I used like Microsoft front page and all that stuff uh, you used to back in the day. And I also, I mean, like anyone, I got a the internet gave me a copy of Photoshop. I don't know what it was, Photoshop four or whatever. And uh, started using that, and uh, I, I was a big fan of like movies and games, um, like I don't know what was a Game Boy and, and, and Super Nintendo and, and that kind of stuff. So that was kind of like uh, my 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 interest and in, like fantasy and science fiction books and comics. In, in Germany, it was very very strong, where like the French Belgian comic style rather than the American ones. Um, so that's kind of like what I was interested in as a kid. And uh, so I actually, uh, I, I had no formal design training or no creative training at all. I was just fiddling around with Photoshop and, and I guess subconsciously digesting all the, the information I got through movies and, 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 and comic books and that kind of stuff. Um, but not really thinking about, hey, I want to make this into a job. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good at this or whatever. I, I had no such thought. I wasn't really good at it anyway. I, living, not living in LA, um, I guess it's like you're not really exposed to the industry behind movie making um, or video games. I mean, that, that just didn't exist there at all. Um, so I, I didn't know that, hey, you can actually make a living out of this, right? 
I kind of did like my high school and then I, I wanted to, I, I dabbled into photography and I was really interested in that and thought, hey, I, I can take pictures. Why don't I sign up for a creative photography college kind of thing mm -hmm. uh, in Munich where I was living? And uh, I mean, I was pretty bad at taking photos. I had no idea. And there were all these like people who were like really good. They They knew everything about like studio photography and this and that. And then there was some kind of entrance exam and of course I failed um, because I had no idea. The only thing I was doing was running around taking snapshots of whatever, whatever I saw outside without really any game or whatever. And it, so I, I got uh, pushed back pretty early on in my, in my creative endeavors. And then also like, I, I didn't really know what to do with this rejection and, and I didn't want to waste any time. And of course, as smart as I was, I only applied at one college. Um, <laughs> And then I, I had to settle for the like the general intake into like the regular university to not waste like a complete year and wait for the next intake at the photography school. So I, I chose uh, out of pure personal interest, I chose uh, Japanese because I was I was studying that a bit like in a like in evening classes while I was at high school and there was a the early stages of the anime and manga craze in Germany in the late nineties, I guess, Dragon Ball and all that, all that kind of stuff. So I signed up for that uh, just to, Hey, I was like, hey, I can spend a year getting better at photography and, and learning a bit of Japanese on the side. Why not? But surprisingly, I really liked the, the academic life and, and the, the language uh, itself proved far more interesting than I initially thought. So, and I was actually able to go to Japan with a scholarship through the program. So that's what I did for the next five years, getting a degree in Japanese. And uh, I actually still continued kind of on a part-time basis doing like the graphic design, web design kind of thing. But again, I, I kind of, I was pretty sick of it at that point already. And I didn't really see a future or like seeing myself, hey, I want to do this for the next 20, 30 years. So I was always torn apart, torn between doing something creatively that I kind of could do to earn money. And then also the, the Japanese stuff, which I had no idea how to turn into a job. So at the end of that, I was like 26 and I had no idea what to do. Yeah. And then I, I met my, I met my uh, now wife uh, in Japan and uh, she, she just got a job in Singapore when I, graduated right and i mean i had nothing better to do i didn't want to continue my part-time job and um, i was finished with my degree and i really had no idea about what i was going to do now with like some weird graphic design knowledge and a master's degree in japanese i mean well, what are you going to do right <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's an odd combination i guess yeah and then and then i actually uh moved to Singapore and I got a job as a, as a graphic designer in a financial services company. So I did that for a while building websites again, which I really didn't want to do. Did you move there for that job? Um, no, no, I moved there because of my then girlfriend, now wife. Okay. okay. Um, for no other reason, honestly. I mean, I had, I, I never was in Singapore before. I had no idea what to expect. And I mean, I'm, now I'm still here after like 10, 11 years. Right. So I guess it's not too bad here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, 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 but then after a while, I, I uh, finally had enough of the whole graphic design thing, and I really wanted to switch. And um, I, I guess, I, I guess it just hit like a critical point where I'm like, I, in the meantime, I, I, I saw all these like Nomen DVDs, like people out of the design and VFX business sharing their knowledge through like. DVDs you could buy and then later on like streaming websites and all that kind of stuff and through that I, I got a glimpse of like hey these people like draw and paint and design for a living and that's like really awesome and um, I was always always interested in the creative process um, in the idea generation for these kind of movies and games and that kind of stuff and and I guess through the internet really I, I got to know about all these uh, different people who do these different things and bookstores were stocking uh, like concept design books, and then I, I finally had an idea of what this what this job actually is about, and what it's called, and what you need to know about it, right? And um, then I thought, hey, okay, I have some I have some savings, and there was a school that just opened in Singapore by by um, 
the guy who worked in Hollywood for for a while and uh, opened the school to teach that there, right? So that was like I think, the first thing, the first one of the first dedicated schools to teach like a, um, not in depth, but like a like a really hardcore one year crash course in industrial slash concept design. So I did that really on a whim. I really had no idea what I was getting into, to be honest. But yeah, I did it, and I I managed to do fairly okay, and then got a job at at Lucas Arts, uh, the the games arm of of uh, Lucas Film, which doesn't exist anymore. So I worked there a couple of years, and then the rest, and just moved on to different gaming companies in Singapore, and then uh, just became a freelancer. And that's kind of what I still do now. So that's kind of the, yeah, the last 15, 20 years condensed in 10 minutes. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I love the story. And I, I wanted to jump back to um, where that, that kind of critical moment that you're talking about where you realize that there is uh, another path or like there is a thing that, that has a name. There's a name for this thing, like concept design. And like, there's an actual path for you to go down in order to do that. Yeah. Like how long did that kind of decision making process take and what kind of gave you like the, the final motivation to, to go for it? Yeah, I was, I was always wondering about that. I, I, I tried to look back to see if there's one particular point where I just made like snap, but I, I can't really think of it. I mean, I still remember that while, while I was in university studying Japanese, I, I did do like these DVDs that you could <clears throat> find somewhere on the internet. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it was almost impossible to get it to Germany, I think at that point. Um, but there were these people who like, um, like the, the now legends like Ryan Church and Dylan Cole or whatever showing like, crazy advanced map painting techniques and I'm just trying like in my Photoshop to like copy that. And and of course it failed miserably because I had no idea what they were actually doing because I mean, those DVDs just show technique rather than really the theoretical knowledge you need to have. So I just remember hazily that I did those and of course failed. I remember picking up some books in the bookstore um, about that kind of stuff I think they had these early books from like Art Center College of Design in, in Pasadena, like like the Skillful Huntsman and that kind of stuff that came out, I think, in the mid 2000s. And I remember like looking at those, and there were some really early memories of of like a high school visit to the uh, Bavaria Film Studios in Munich. They they had uh, props from movies that they shot there, from like uh, the Never Ending Story or. Um, or uh, Das Boot, like the World War II submarine movie, the miniature and the the tank where they shot all the scenes and the the, the big submarine itself where they did the interior shoots. So, I mean, I, I know I mentioned before that I wasn't exposed to like the movie industry like people are in LA, but fair enough, there was there was the Bavaria Film Studios. But I mean, as a I went there as a ten year old. I mean, I. I I do remember walking around there uh, in, the, in the fake stages, uh, sound stages and that kind of stuff. But uh, again, it, at that point, I wasn't that into like looking for a job. Like a 10 year old is just like, oh, cool, look at this. Yeah. Oh, cool, look at this. Hey, can we go for lunch? Right. Um, <laughs> so I have, I have all these accumulation of little things here and there, like my interest in photography, uh, this kind of stuff. But I, I really wonder when. I guess it was just an accumulation that really took like like 15 years to to come to fruition. I mean, there was really not one particular person or one particular point where I said like, uh, okay, I I I know what to do now. I want to go this way. I mean, I really had no idea for most of the time. Right. Yeah. I mean, the 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 point when I really made the the commitment to it was. At the first thing, uh, first company I worked in Singapore, my uh, the, the financial services company, I was obviously not very happy in my job. So my boss said, like, "Hey, uh, I, I know you don't like this work. Um, like, what do you want to do? If you had the choice to do anything you want." So I just said, like, "Hey, I want to work for Lucasfilm. I want to work in movies, right?" And then he's like, "Oh, so what do you have to do?" And then it's like, "Oh, I have to go back to school and study this and this." And it's like, "Okay." Uh, I give you two weeks, tell me which school you want to go to, and then I'll support you financially for for another year while you 
learn your new job. So that kind of gave me the the push and the confidence to to really go for it. Um, but of course, I kind of at that point I already knew what I kind of wanted to do. Right? It's just that it's that scary point where where you don't know if you can really do it. And I'm, I was 28 already at that point, so I was a bit hesitant to to go back to school again after like already spending so many years in university for and then having not really any having not really achieved anything other than like a paper degree right mm -hmm. so um it, it was quite a scary point but i mean maybe i was naive and stupid but i kind of just did it um but yeah it's, it's more an accumulation of things of what i what i consumed what i processed and the kind of things i i like doing i don't know yeah, I wouldn't say naive and stupid. I would say like brave, <laughs> definitely brave. Like, because I think that's like I think that's what a yeah. lot, the situation a lot of people find themselves in, my, myself included. Like, you get a degree and you pay a ton of money to go to school and stuff, and then all it is really is just like a paper that says that you went to school. Um, and a lot of times our interests change, and we've already started going down this path, so you feel stuck and you feel kind of trapped by like the kind of the the system, <laughs> you know. So like it's very mm -hmm. hard to make that leap or to make that kind of commitment to yourself to realize that you're interested in some something new something completely new mm -hmm. um, and you know the, the kind of pain that it's going to take to to learn all the all of that stuff that you don't know especially as you're watching videos where you're just like trying to emulate what the, what the people are doing you just have no idea what to do um what what kind of gave you the motivation then um as you're for example watching those videos and seeing the gap in knowledge um what gave you the inspiration to do it was it just the absolute love that you had for this 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 new thing i don't know i i, I don't think i have anything any any romantic answer for that <laughs> i mean I, I i started these dvds like dozens of times like i i started and then i was like okay i can't do this mm -hmm. i i had that strong connection of having an inborn talent to be a creative and i thought okay i just don't have that i can't draw like I can't do this. I can't paint. So I thought painting is just like you, you can either you can do it or you can't. Because I mean, in school, in high school, in, in art class, you see some people just being really good at it and getting an A, and then like you yourself is kind of like, eh, and you get like a C or whatever. And C in art class is kind of like whatever, right? The rest. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, I I didn't have anything like that. I, I started uh, very naively and 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 threw down the. And, and threw down the paintbrush like half an hour later and then I forgot about it for another six months and then I started doing it again and then that repeated for many 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 years and uh, I, I, I didn't I didn't have any like okay I need to do this I mean I love it so much I have to do this I don't know for, but I mean something kind of brought me back to it again and again right I mean it, but everything was very like I feel like very subconscious and and um, kind of nagging at me from the inside and um but I, I, I honestly can't can't tell you like uh um any heroic uh romantic story about uh, ending up in this industry it's really i kind of i think i pushed back a lot like uh, like you said there's that urge to like uh, you, you sank already so much time in your degree then you better finish it right mm -hmm. i mean that's also what kind of my parents said like hey you already spent like three four years uh, just like finish your degree and then you can do whatever you want afterwards right i mean in the end that was actually a very good decision because having a having a university degree really helps you when you want to work overseas um because again they they, they don't they only care about like um immigration mostly cares about what's on paper right they don't care about your qualification uh, in terms of like skills or whatever like if you can paint well or whatever they don't care about that so that really helped me like settle in a foreign country but yeah halfway through I, my degree i kind of knew like okay i don't want to do this <laughs> but uh, yeah it's it's i mean i still struggle to understand how i ended up here and how i can still make all this work <laughs> but um yeah well, I kind of like that that answer though, like that it just keeps coming back, and I think a, a lot of people can relate to that. It's like this thing just keeps coming back again and again, and even if you do give up the first time, um, and then you find that it comes back 
you know, six months, a year, two years later. And that like that nagging desire that like, hey, you got to do this. <laughs> like you, you, you need to complete me. You need to like finish me. You need to start me even. Um, it's important to like listen to that voice and at least give it another go, you know? Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk about your first job because <laughs> LucasArts, that's a crazy kind of first job to, to get. Um, what was that experience like? Um, yeah, it was, I think, um, the, the job that I, that I got this job was mostly, I, I mean, I, I, I think it was still luck. Um, a bit of circumstance. I, I graduated at the top of my class. So I actually got the biggest, uh, spot at the grad show and the, the best spot at the, at the grad show. Um, so that was, of course, a bit of, Need working hard and I think also being a bit lucky that I was one of the first intakes in the school and the, the, the quality of the, the students was still very, very widespread. And uh, I guess I, I, I was like, I think by far the oldest and, and except for one other guy, I think. And I guess I had that urge to really do well and be disciplined. And I guess other, other, other kids came just like, out of like military service or high school and, and they got everything paid by their parents. So they really had no idea what they were doing there. Um, at least that's what it felt like to me. Whereas I was like, it was all my own money. I, I went completely bankrupt at the end. I think, yeah, I had that urge to do well. So I, that, that helped me to propel myself, I guess, to the top of the class and yeah, the lack of competition. And then I had a friend of a friend was working at Lucas arts as a producer and, Shortly before I graduated, somebody else left. So there was an opening. So that was the, the luck, right? And then I did a couple of rounds of interviews and, and I was, I, I think I was naggy enough to like chase them up mm -hmm. to, to call them all the time. And yeah, that, that little bit of persistence really helped me then get my foot in the door. And, um, it was it was a weird time to, to be working for Lucas Arts um, because they they just uh, I think they had a new boss in San Francisco. I mean, I worked in the Singapore office, so but still, the direction comes out of San Francisco, and they they had a new boss I think who came from Epic Games and who kind of wanted to revamp the entire games division because it was struggling a bit. The entire company was in the beginning stages, I think, of the negotiation with the takeover from Disney. So for for the latter part of me working there was a bit, I think it, there was a, there was a different atmosphere and it was a bit like, um, didn't know where everything was going to be headed, um, with the takeover. And then, um, some games were getting canceled. And I mean, that happens all the time, but, um, it was an interesting experience. It, it's full of very nice, very talented people. And that it's a shared space with, uh, ILM and, and the animation department is, is super cool that you get to see all these people. And I mean, they, they invest a lot in uh, teaching and uh, skills development. So that was pretty cool. And they're not really big fans, I think, of, of crun, of crunching. They're more like interested in like, um, in the welfare of the people and that they having fun doing what they do. So it was, it was a, that was a very good experience, I think. And um, even though in the end, all games I worked on got canceled mm. and I cannot show any of the work. I mean, it was, it was I mean, as good a starting point as, a, as I could have hoped for because all the people who, who, who got let go in San Francisco, they spread out all over the West Coast and further. And uh, I made some friends there and I couldn't, can always call them back to, ask for like freelance jobs. So that really helped me. And there's a lot of just nice people um, who, who I met. And in Singapore, the industry is very small. So all these people who got let go here, they moved on to different companies or founded different companies. And and it's quite nice to, to still have kind of like connections to all these little companies here and there. So that's pretty cool. Right. Well, yeah. And then from LucasArts, I mean, you have, you've worked for like, all the names <laughs> Paramount Pictures, Warner Brothers, yeah. um, Marvel, EA, Sony, Ubisoft. I mean, you name it. Um, and then I, I would imagine that not being able to show your work, um, especially with LucasArts, um, not being able to show it at all. And then you probably have to wait a while to be able to show your work for a lot of your other clients. 
do you do a lot of personal work as well? And then like, how do you kind of merge the two or like, how do you find the time to, to do both? Yeah, that's, that's the eternal struggle as a, as a freelancer, right? Um, or actually as a, as a artist in our industry in general, because due to the nature of our work, we, we do a lot of stuff in pre-production or in the planning phase or in the, like the, the pitch phase, right? Which is even earlier. So it, it's not, it's not uncommon to work on a project that only will be released in four to five years. Not only do we have to wait that long for the, for, for a chance to release our work, but in five years, like our skill set is so vastly different and our, the quality of work we can produce is also mostly vastly different. So often I don't want to show the work anymore when it's so old and, and games change directions, right? And movies change visually directions, right? It's not like, we do one piece like in 2012 and then the movie that comes out in 2017 looks exactly like the piece we drew, right? Mm. That will never happen. And at that point, the company is not comfortable with us releasing that work anymore. So what, 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 what trickles out at the end or whatever you see online is maybe like less than 1%, I think, of, of the art that's being produced for all these big projects, right? And because of that, and you, you, you need, you need as a freelancer some, material to promote yourself right for for marketing to show off what you can do at, at any, like at this point in time so you need to produce uh personal work right um it's it's a it's a it's a shitty situation i'd, I'd much rather release all the stuff i i worked on over the years but yeah unfortunately we can't, i can't or we can't do that so there's a there's a very basic necessity to to produce personal work so that you can get the next job, right? Because that, that's our, that's our business card, our work, right? That's, that's what we, what we do. But of course, also on the creative side, doing personal work is, is really necessary because even though it's work, even though it's, it's production artwork, uh, blueprints for whatever, and not a self-contained painting or whatever, there's always a little bit of, our personal experience of a little bit of us in there, right? Um, no matter how how sterile or no matter how far removed from our own personal personal preference the, the the images are that we produce, there's a very personal need to express yourself in a way that is not controlled by um, the art director or the the production guidelines and that kind of stuff. So. We, you, in order to really put yourself out there in, in, in a way that is true to yourself, um, you really need to put out personal work and a lot of it. I think there needs to be a good balance between, between, um, client work and personal work. I'm, I'm very bad at this. I have to say I don't do much in parallel, to be honest, which is probably the better way, the more sustainable way that you do a bit of client work and then you produce something for yourself and then you, you go back to client work again. Whereas I go like, I, I disappear for way too long in client work and don't do anything else. And then I totally get burned out and, and disappointed and, and, um, I want to throw everything down and then I go back to a bit of personal work and then I'm happy again. So <laughs> it's probably not the smartest way of doing it, but, um, it, it's, it's a bit, I mean, I used to work long hours, weekends, nights, uh, all the time when I was younger, but now I have like family, like wife and kids and everything and more responsibilities. So it's, it's getting more difficult to, to handle all of that and to pack it into, into a day in which you can bring the kids to school and, and spend some time with them, play with them, have some time for the wife, exercise as you get older. And, and then you're supposed to do client work which gives money to provide you for your family. And then you're supposed to do like personal work to fulfill yourself creatively. I mean, uh, <laughs> there, there are limits, right. To all of this. So it's, it's a, it's a struggle that I think is just getting more intense as you get older. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. That's something I literally just talked about, um, on a solo episode as well. Um, it's, it's such a tough balance to do, especially when you are committed to either a job or like you have a, a schedule of work that is constantly coming out. It's tough to make that balance and to, to find the time to get to your own personal work. But I agree. Um, sometimes or all the time, I feel like cre creative people have this like energy that they need to get out. And if they're yeah. doing client work, it might not have the kind of 
um, power to get that energy out, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah. you do need to find that. So, um, I know that you struggle with, with trying to find that balance, like we, like we all do. Um, but when you do find that, they, that you can kind of find a good balance or you're, you know, you're satisfied, but you're also being able to exercise, provide for your family, everything kind of is flowing. Um, what, uh, do you find that, um, leads to that? very very rigorous discipline mm. I, I mean i'm 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 incredibly bad uh, to motivate myself um i read so many like books about how to like, like efficient time management and 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 uh, task management and use these apps on your computer to track your time and this and don't waste time here and do this and that and, and no no one model worked for me until i i kind of realized that I can just like take bits and pieces from here and that works. But I have to really figure out, like it took me a long time to figure out a rhythm and I have to follow it very rigorously to get anything done. Um, that That's how it works for myself. So like when I, when I, when I uh, want to like, I don't know when I want to go exercise and, or when I want to eat healthy, I really have to force myself and it's like a painful forcing myself every single day to do it. And the same it is with work. And I have to finish client work at a certain time that I can then spend time with the family. I, I found no other way than super painful discipline. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I maybe there's different ways and maybe other people are better with this, but um, there's, there's a huge amount of pain to go through almost on a daily basis, I think, to really achieve that balance. At, at, at any point in time, like I really hate exercising. I hate eating healthy, <laughs> but <too. laughs> I know that I know that in the, in the, in this, in the, in the long run, this is really going to help me. And maybe half an hour later, I feel really good about it, but, uh, it's, it's always, it's making really hard choices almost on a daily basis. Right. And I kind of keep track of it. Um, maybe that's why I'm German, right? I, I keep track of <laughs> these things and, and, uh, in a really, strict way of like um okay today this worked particularly well for me i did well here but i failed in this other area um so i need to improve the next day right so um i i, I tried so many models as i said before in terms of time management task management and, and i always failed and then i threw everything away altogether and 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 always like how can these people do all these amazing things and um i guess as, as, as you get older you learn that even the people who write these books, uh, they probably fail on a daily basis as well, right? And it's okay to fail every single day in achieving the tasks you set out to do, right? But that shouldn't lead you to throw everything away altogether and, st and start from scratch again, right? You should, you should iterate. You should try the next day as hard as you tried today, right? And, and it needs to continue every single day like that. It's the only way how you're going to how are you going to improve, right? You're not going to, you're not going to make big jumps. Like suddenly you're like super productive and super fit or whatever, right? It's like chipping away little by little every single day. That's really going to, what's going to make you improve and, and get better and get healthier, fitter, a better artist, a better dad, a better husband, right? That's the kind of things you need to do. Yes. Well said. Yeah. Constant, constant work. And I agree. I, I think there's like a lot of different quote, you know, like systems or methods of trying to be a better human, a better uh, productive yeah. human. Um, and I think that for some creative people, we just have these personalities where, you know, we can try to implement those systems like you, like you said. And I feel like sometimes they're only a band aid, uh, or they can only temporarily kind of fix our problems or, you know, mm. getting past our resistances and all this stuff. Um, but I think the, the, the main point is to, keep trying, like you said, and to just always be aware and always be, you know, working on it and trying to like you, yeah. <laughs> like you said, that's why you're German, uh, you know, just <laughs> always be yeah. like kind of seeing what works, what doesn't work and not be too hard on yourself and keep, yeah, keep trying. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, Good summary. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the last question I wanted to ask you about was, yeah. pro, um, project T, uh, could you talk about oh, that? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was, um, I don't know, um, it was one of those times when I was really fed up with too much client work and 
I wasn't really getting anywhere creatively. And um, I tried to to do something um, that was just uh, close to my heart, right? I mean, I, I lived in Japan. I lived in Singapore. I lived a bit in Hong Kong. And I took a lot of pictures over the uh, over the years. And um, I had all this stuff lying on my hard disk. And, and um, I kind of wanted to, to find a way to bring all of that together and to just kind of do what I wanted to do for myself without really any consideration of what, what, what kind of push this could give my portfolio. I mean, there's, there's always the, the, the thing in my, in the back of my head, like, Oh, I need to produce some personal work that is marketable. That is, that's, that can give me some good jobs, but um, I completely stopped doing that or recommending that to people. Um, so with project T, I, I really just, even even stepping away a bit from from purely concept design or like sci-fi blah 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 spaceships dragons or whatever like mm-hmm. the, the typical tropes um i just wanted to kind of do what i was interested in like photography and and exploring a bit of of technical things that i haven't done before um with different kinds of software so it's also a technical challenge and and i kind of just wanted to bring everything under one roof and, and see what just comes out of it. I, I didn't really have like a strong brief or like a strong idea. I think even I was just playing around with it and, and it kind of one thing led to another and I was like, Hey, this looks like this. Then I can bring on these photos and then I can bring on this and I shot some videos. So maybe I can bring that one in. So it was kind of born out of, out of happenstance and the urge to do something that looks maybe a bit different than, what's out there already. Um, maybe, maybe in some areas I succeeded more than in others. It, it got some interesting response. Um, it actually got me some interesting jobs as well. So I was very happy about that, that it kind of proved my, my, my point that, okay, I can do something that I'm interested in uh, and not care too much about what's, what's popular right now on, on the websites and the, on the, um, creative like social networks or whatever uh, and it still f- will find an audience um, so that was that kind of gave me a lot of confidence I think yeah so that's I know that that's the basic thing behind the basic uh, process that I that I had behind this little project of mine well I, I love it and that's like one of the things that I try to really promote on this show is just doing stuff that doesn't matter, that doesn't have like an end audience in mind that is yeah. pure, purely for your own enjoyment. Because I think that's, I think a cure to a lot of some of the creative resistances that we can have. You, you need to do that as a creative person. You need to um, get that energy out like we were talking about before. And so mm-hmm. if you can, yeah. you know, have that thing that is near and dear to your heart for whatever reason, maybe it's something that you used to do or something yeah. that you know you want to do in the future um, without any kind of worry just for yourself, an audience of one. I think that's super important and congrats to you, yeah, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that's, that's uh, exactly what it is, right? Uh, you just, it's purely for yourself um, and for nobody else. And that's, I think, how it, how it has to be really for it to be f- like fulfilling creatively and personally. Yeah. Beautiful, man. All right. Jan, well, the way we like to end this show is with what I call the final push. And that's where I ask you to reach through the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today and just give them your best final words of advice and really push them to pursue their own creative passions. Wow, that's a that's a very difficult task. <laughs> it's an intense way to end. <laughs> yeah, it's an intense way to end it. I mean, I already said like that you really have to follow your own path, right? your own creative ideas, right? really listen to them. Actually, I can address a question that I'm getting asked sometimes because, I mean, I, some people reach out to me through email or through uh, social media and, and they usually really, really young guys um, that are like, uh, that are inspired by the work that is out there, by the movies that they watch and they want to pursue a, a, a job in this industry as well, right? And they're like, they're like 16, 17, and they're like, oh, so what do I need to learn? Which, which software do I need to learn to be able to do this? And which school do I have to go to? And I mean, yes, there's a straightforward way to like go there, right? It's like, oh, you take these evening classes there, then you get into art center. And then 
after four years, you're going to be like amazing, right? You can, you can do that. Great. But then chances are that your stuff is just going to look as generic as a lot of other people's stuff, right? If you're at that age, I would always recommend to just like live your life and have a bit of fun. I think people are just not doing that enough. They're too focused on like, I don't know, making money or like uh, becoming a superstar and the fame or whatever. But it's really not, it's really, they really shouldn't do that. Um, because as, as a designer, as a creative, um, you're really pulling from from your own life experience, right? All all the ideas you can pull from, all the all what makes you you and uh, the, the stuff you bring to the table um, is really informed and inspired by everything you have experienced and you have seen as a as a person, right? Whether it's travel, whether it's like art or just like living itself, right? In different places uh, across the globe or whatever. Um, all that would really make you like a, a better artist. It's not like sitting at home and drawing and, 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 and watching like tons of movies and playing lots of video games. That really is not going to help you get anywhere, right? I mean, of course, you have to be technically proficient, but that will come over time anyway, right? Um, that's that's nothing you can you can learn any kind of software really quickly right um but it's that it's that taste it's design sense and all that kind of stuff that really comes out of what you have experienced and and that cannot be replaced and and you really need to do that yourself and nobody can give that to you so i mean my my uh my uh, recommendation is to like experience as much as you can and and live a live a full life and and that will really help you to become a, a better designer i think in the end a better creative I hope that makes sense it makes total sense yeah you need that life experience in order to kind of put it into your your own work or to figure out what you really care about too <laughs> yeah exactly exactly right the worst is the when people say like oh i don't know what to draw and if you tell me you want to be a, a designer a creative and you don't know what to draw then i don't know i really that, that's a tough thing <laughs> right yeah like they say they don't know what they want to draw but i think sometimes it's like an even deeper thing where it's like i don't know if i'm allowed to draw what i'm truly interested in which is yes you definitely are <laughs> so do it you oh know? yeah most definitely most definitely cool uh, Jan, thank you, thank you so much for coming on the show today, for giving us that push and sharing your story. I really appreciate it, man. No problem. Thank you for inviting me. Of course. Uh, and you can find Jan on his website, which is hendrix-design.com. And we'll have that all linked up at today's show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Jan Yorschel. Jan, thanks again. Great. Thank you. Huge thank you once again to Jan for coming on the show. And it's always fun when... Uh, certain themes come up in the show from one episode to the other, one interview to the other. Uh, it seems like just these themes keep coming up over and over again. And I always uh, double check as I'm listening back and as I'm uh, kind of noticing some of these recurring themes. I always wonder if it's me that's kind of pushing those questions. And I always try to make sure that that it isn't me, that it is just kind of some uh, magical synchronicities. And one that has come up uh, in this episode and uh, a couple of the next few episodes that you're going to be hearing is the idea of getting that input of experiencing life so that you do have that inspiration to put back into your art to enjoy living life as opposed to stressing out and working all the time and that is definitely something that i uh, am very guilty of um, I've talked about it before, but, you know, diving a little too deep, a little bit too hard into certain projects. I become a little bit obsessed, whether it's a, a video game or a, or a TV show. That's why I try to stay away from those things a little bit more or uh, a healthy project like doing this podcast or like uh, learning about cryptocurrency. I just get obsessed. And that is a really good thing. And something that I do encourage you to do is to dive in and dive in hard and really Go fast and go hard um, so that you can get as much out of this, this new joy, this new hobby that you might have, but also know to come up for air and to balance yourself out because you might realize that your relationships are faltering or your social life is faltering or your inputs are faltering. 
So it's not just the the social life thing, the uh, experiencing the most out of life and being a well versed person, but it also comes down to starting to become a one trick pony, where one thing, one strategy, or one subject area is maybe particularly working for you. So you kind of fall into that, and you fall into that groove, and then don't push yourself in other directions. As Jan and I discussed, it is a very difficult、uh, balance to maintain, but it's really important to. Get those inputs from other places to continue to be inspired by different things and to continue to learn more. Keep getting those inputs. Don't feel guilty about getting those inputs either. And remember, even as hard as you are pushing to make this a creative life every single day, that you're not pushing yourself with the output too much. That you're still enjoying this very rare thing that is called life, because that is what it's all about at the end of the day. On our next episode, we have Shane Taylor. Shane is a Chicago-based illustrator, designer, and maker, and she comes on for a very interesting, very inspiring, and very different episode. We definitely dove into a lot of different topics, specifically having to do with the idea of unpredictability and embracing unpredictability, but also、um, family ties and. Handling、uh, the fact that maybe our family, friends, specifically parents, <laughs> might not exactly get what we do or support us in the way that we were maybe hoping. If you want to find out more about Shane, you can head to her website at shaneart.com. That's S H A Y N E A R T dot com. And on Instagram and Facebook, she is Shane Art. And of course, we will have that all linked up at today's show notes page, including everything we talked about with Jan at yourcreativepush.com/slash290. But that is all I've got for you today. So hopefully, you were inspired to go and get that work done, and to go and get those inputs. Go and live life. Go and get those experiences, and then bring them back to your creative pursuits. I love you all so much. Go and get some amazing work done, and we will see you next time. Bye. Never miss a push. Head to yourcreativepush.com/slash-subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast.